Doctors on TV are always staring off into the distance, thinking about test results and mystifying symptoms until a miracle diagnosis light bulb goes off over their head. Or sometimes they're getting an urgent page running pell-mell through the hospital and cracking someone's chest open in an elevator. Or removing an active bomb from inside a patient or struggling to separate two people impaled on the same pole except for when they're busy having lurid love affairs with their coworkers. Of course, in real life, not every doctor is living a 24-7 emotional roller coaster ride of a soap opera. But while in real life, there's not quite so much soap opera drama, being a doctor and caring for people is incredibly valuable. Hi, I'm Dr. Jordan Colston. I'm an internal medicine physician, and here's how to become a doctor. Now, even if you've never seen Grey's Anatomy, or House, or Scrubs, or Chicago Med, or Casualty, or The Good Doctor, or Nurse Jackie, or ER, or Doc McStuffins, you probably have a general idea of what doctors are up to. In really basic terms, a doctor or a physician is a healthcare professional whose job it is to get people healthy and keep them that way. They're the folks you might go to for your yearly checkup, or when you're pretty sure that cold is really strep throat, or when WebMD tells you that that weird spot on your arm is cancer. They do stuff like examine patients, learn about their medical histories, run diagnostic tests, and give advice on how patients can take good care of themselves. But even though all doctors pretty much share the same goal, they don't all go about it the same way. There's about as many types of doctors as there are seasons of Grey's Anatomy, which is to say, arguably, way too many. I mean, even on Grey's Anatomy, you've got the hot neurosurgeon, the hot cardiothoracic surgeon, and the hot anesthesiologist. And those guys just work in surgery, which is only one field of medicine. Other areas of focus include family medicine, where doctors provide non-surgical care to people of all ages, from babies to their great-grandparents, and usually serve as the first point of contact for patients' health concerns. This is slightly different from pediatrics, which is specifically about babies, children, and adolescents. Then there's internal medicine, my personal specialty. Internal medicine doctors focus a little more on complex, chronic, and severe illnesses. And then there's certain kinds of medicine that focus on specific body parts, like obstetrics and gynecology, which is all about the reproductive organs, ophthalmology, which focuses on the eyes, and gastroenterology, which studies the digestive system. Some specific illnesses have their own specific kinds of doctors too, like oncologists who work with cancer patients, and allergists who support people with allergies and immune problems. And then there's neurology, which specializes in the brain, spinal cord and nerves, and psychiatry, which deals with mental, emotional, and behavioral disorders. And even beyond that, there are tons more specialties and subspecialties that give doctors unique perspectives and skills. Doctors can work in all kinds of different places too. The ones on TV all seem to work at hospitals, but they might also work at other healthcare organizations, like a physician's office, where you might go to see your primary care doctor, or clinics, which is like a hospital, but can usually only provide outpatient services where the patient doesn't need to stay overnight. Or they might even work as solo practitioners taking clients independently on their own schedule in their own office, like private practice, anyone? And don't think your options are confined to the walls of a doctor's office or hospital. Many doctors end up pivoting into other industries like biotech, public health. But no matter your focus or location, doctors do a lot of work besides working with patients. Behind those staff-only doors, doctors spend a lot of time on what Grey's Anatomy heads might call scut. Stuff like calling in prescriptions and coordinating discharges and writing in charts and notes and summaries. And doctors in certain settings, like teaching hospitals, might have other responsibilities too as they train the next generation of interns and residents. All that stuff might be less dramatic than solving medical mysteries, but it is what makes the medical world go round and what keeps those squirrely interns in line. And although their jobs are busy, Doctors tend to do all right for themselves. Salaries will obviously vary by experience, specialty, and location. But in 2023, the median salary for physicians and surgeons was upwards of $239,000. And some specialists can even make a heck of a lot more. Enough to build your dream house in the woods outside of Seattle, or buy the hospital you work at and name it after your friends who were inexplicably killed in a plane crash. If there's one thing Gray's got right, it's that doctors have a lot going on. It's a hard job, often with long, weird hours and the weight of actual human lives on your shoulders. But it's also incredibly rewarding. You're the person people come to when they need help the most. And a lot of times, you can make their lives better. So if you're down with both the miracles and the mundanity of medicine, let's get into it. Medicine is not an easy field to get into. Just ask those poor, desperate, sleep-deprived interns. But there are tons of things you can do to help set yourself up for success. Like if you don't already have an undergrad degree, 
you'll probably want to apply to colleges with strong pre-med tracks to put you on the righteous path to med school. Pre-med is kind of weird because, at least at a lot of places, it's not really a major. It's more like an advising pathway. You'll have a few core classes like anatomy, grades or otherwise, and physiology, which will help you a lot when you get to med school. But your actual major might be something like biology, psychology, or even social work. Your med school application will include your college transcript, your obviously Emmy award-winning personal statement, and the scores from the Medical College Admission Test, or the MCAT. The MCAT is a standardized test that helps medical schools evaluate what you know about various sciencey topics and whether you can use stuff like data, statistics, and critical thinking to reason your way through problems. It's really important, so you're probably going to want to put in some serious time studying. And when it comes to med school, you've got some options. The most common kind of medical school is what's called allopathic medical school, which awards doctors of medicine, or MDs. But there are also osteopathic medical schools, which awards doctors of osteopathic medicine, or DOs. The difference between the two are subtle and kind of philosophical, with DOs putting more emphasis on manual treatments and holistic patient care. But they'll give you the same essential information, and both of them will qualify you to study and practice the whole range of medicine in all 50 US states, which means whether you want to be a dermatologist or perform open heart surgery in an elevator, either an MD or a DO would be a fine choice. And whichever you pick, get ready for probably four more years of studying, this time focused specifically on medicine. Your med school classes might cover stuff like the scientific foundations of medicine and ethics and humanities and structural racism and health equity. And you'll learn about all the inner workings of medicine and healthcare systems like how you should not cut your patient's LVAD wire and steal a transplant heart. Like, for real, don't do that. You'll also get a chance to apply all that new knowledge in the real world. Clinical rotations or clerkships are a really important part of medical school, where you'll spend short periods of time working in a variety of different medical settings, probably at a hospital or clinic associated with your school. That experience in different fields is really important because around your third year of med school, you'll want to choose a specialty that specific area of medicine that you think you would want to practice. At the end of that, you'll graduate from med school, which, even though it's far from the end of your doctor journey, is still pretty exciting. Med school graduation is when you officially become a doctor and get that MD or DO after your name, and the right to jump in when somebody on an airplane asks if anyone is a doctor. But even though you're technically a doctor, as your newly printed business cards proclaim, you're not actually allowed to practice medicine just yet you've still got to work your way through the next phase of your education, residency. Residency can last between three and seven years, and it's when doctors really start to focus on one field of medicine. That specialty you picked out in medical school will help you figure out what residency programs you want to go into. Like if you're interested in surgery, you know you'll want to go to Seattle Grace or, you know, a real teaching hospital with a real surgical residency program. Residency is also where doctors start to get paid. Being a resident is a job, as well as a step in your education. And residents make an average of somewhere between sixty dollars and $70,000 a year as of 2024. Once you land a residency position through an ominous, inscrutable process known as the match, you'll join your new program as a first-year resident, sometimes called an intern. From there, you'll be off to the races. Residency is a big transition from medical school. As the venerable Chief Weber once said, a month ago, you were in med school being trained by doctors. Today, you are the doctors. Throughout your residency, you'll work as a medical professional, caring for actual patients under the supervision of an attending physician. That practice is what will give you the hands-on skill, practical know-how, and advanced specialized knowledge that makes a little fledgling MD into a majestic, full-grown doctor. You'll also keep raking in those credentials throughout your residency. Early career residents usually earn some kind of training certificate that actually allows them to practice medicine in the real world. And later down the residency road, they'll go through some state-specific steps to earn a full medical license, a state-issued license that grants the right to practice medicine independently. That medical license is technically all you need to practice medicine, but lots of workplaces like hospitals require board certification too. This usually involves meeting some initial eligibility requirements, having lots of demonstrated experience, and passing a test from a certifying board. And board certification is specialized, which means you'll be proving what you know about a specific field of medicine, like family medicine, or gastroenterology, or orthopedic surgery. Because of that, doctors can actually have multiple board certifications in related areas, like the late great Mark Sloan, 
double board certified in plastics and ENT. Even once you pass the first time, you'll have to renew your board certification every five to 10 years. So you'll have to keep on learning and growing and staying on top of your field. Basically, becoming a doctor is kind of a lot of work. How else do you think they got 20 seasons out of that show? Even after residency and board certification, doctors in certain specialties might move on to fellowships where they work closely with a specialist in the field and learn even more about medicine. By and large, once you're licensed and board certified, you're good to start slicing and dicing or, you know, making proper controlled paramedian incisions. But even if you don't know you want to be a doctor before you start college, you can still get yourself there. You can go to med school at any age, as long as you meet some prereq requirements and could do well on the MCAT. Lots of colleges and universities even offer post back med school prep programs that can help you get everything you need to get started on your doctor journey. The journey is still a long one though. Whenever you start, there's really no easy way to become a doctor. So if you're not down for 10 to 20 years of school, but you're still interested in working in the medical field, there are some other career paths you could consider. Ones that have a lot in common with the job description of doctoring without so many of the educational qualifications. Like if you love caring for the sick and want to be involved in patient care, you could look into becoming a nurse or even a nursing assistant. While nursing might be a little less schooling, it's a really demanding job with its own set of challenges and rewards, of course. Nursing assistant jobs often only require a few weeks of coursework and an exam before you start working. So many nurses go this route to get right into the job while continuing to pursue higher nursing degrees, like an LPN, an RN, or BSN. Nursing salaries can vary based on your experience and certifications, but in 2023, RNs made a median of about $86,000 a year. You might consider becoming a physician assistant or PA. PAs are medical professionals who work under the supervision of licensed doctors. And even though they can't practice medicine on their own, their day-to-day -day work can look a lot like a doctor's. PAs can examine and diagnose patients, and execute treatment plans, interpret lab results, and assist in surgeries. After getting a bachelor's degree, PAs typically follow a two-year program to get a master's in PA studies, and sometimes complete a one or two-year fellowship for more practice and expertise. And they do all right for themselves too, making a median of about $130,000 a year as of 2023. Nursing or physician assisting are great options for healthcare-inclined people who don't wanna go through 15 years of school and 20 seasons of television. If you do decide to go the full-fledged DO or MD route, one reward for all that school is that by the time you're officially a doctor, you've kind of already had your first job. Your residency is considered your first official position as a doctor, and it can be the launch point for the rest of your career. After your residency and maybe a fellowship, you'll be looking to become an attending physician, a top dog doctor who's independently in charge of patient care in your specialty. If you're a main character on Grey's Anatomy, or maybe just lucky. You might get hired as a fellow or an attending in the same place where you did your residency. That way you don't have to do so much job searching and we don't lose any of our faves to Seattle Presbyterian. But attending jobs aren't exactly a dime a dozen. So some people recommend that you start thinking about your job search while you still have a year or two left in your residency. That way when residency ends, you'll hit the ground running. Some people recommend working with physician recruiters who work for potential employers to help fill their open spots. Recruiters are in the know about all kinds of possible jobs, and it's their job to get you in the one that's right for you. So they can be really helpful, especially early in your career. But you can also look for jobs on your own. Job boards like Indeed and ZipRecruiter will sometimes have postings for doctors. But you can also try more specialized boards like medicaljobs.org, Health e Careers, and Health Jobs Nationwide that might make your search easier. However you go about your job search, you want to call on the connections you made through all your doctor training. That's one of the perks of such a long educational process. By the time you're looking for a job, you already know someone who can help you out. If after all this, you're thinking, yes, doctoring is worth 20 years of education and hundreds of thousands of dollars in tuition, congratulations on your certainty. But if you're wishing you could at least test the waters before committing two decades and the down payment on a house, there are a couple of ways you can dip your toe in before you take that big leap. Like simply taking challenging science-based courses in high school or college can help you get a taste of the coursework aspects of doctor training. If you love learning in a demanding classroom and making groundbreaking discoveries in your high school chem lab, that could be a sign that you're a great doctor in the making. And after high school, working in an entry-level medical job will help you start to see what the field really feels like from the inside. By working as an EMT, a paramedic, a phlebotomist, a medical scribe, or even a certified nursing assistant, you can get an understanding of the medical field while making, 
instead of spending money. And if it turns out that blood and guts give you the ick, that's a lesson better learned after 12 weeks of training than after 12 years. And in the meantime, you can always practice presenting to your attending. Patient has an interest in helping others, the drive to keep learning for their whole career, and the good looks and winning personality of a doctor drama star. They seem to be a great fit for a career as a doctor. So let's get them to med school stat. If you wanna learn more about undergrad major options, Check out our Fast Guide series where we dive into popular college majors and check out gostudyhall.com for more resources. If you want to help us out, give this video a like, comment your favorite medical drama, and smash that subscribe button.